everyone, the snowman here, and today I've got an instructional video on different club soccer leagues and club soccer competitions. Uh, club soccer, a lot different than international play. I know probably most of you tune in at least once every 40 years for the World Cup, but uh, club soccer goes on every single year, goes on annually, and there's a lot of different leagues, there's a lot of different competitions to keep track of. Um, yes, it would be cool if there was just one soccer league year round like the NFL or like the NBA where all the best players played and it was very easy to keep track of, but uh, it's not like that. So today I want to talk about the best leagues. I want to talk about different competitions, different formats, and uh, kind of just give a guide to uh, club global football. So let's start out. Most of the best players in the world play in five main leagues, and they are all in Europe. You have in Spain, La Liga, Germany, the Bundesliga. In uh, Italy, you have Serie A, France then, League One, and perhaps the best one in the world. In England, you have the English Premier League. That is kind of universally regarded as the best uh, soccer league in the world, but really... I'd say 90, 95% of the top players in the world, they play in these five leagues, okay? Sure, the Brazilian leagues, the Argentinian leagues, the MLS, they've got some good players, but these are the five main leagues. The MLS is a little bit different. I know it's convenient for us here in the States to watch and get into, and that's good, but it's just kind of a cut below these five main leagues. So I want to focus kind of mostly on Europe, mostly on these leagues today, and that's how we're going to base uh, these competitions off of, but just know that those are the five best leagues in the world. So we know that the NFL has 32 teams. We know the NBA has 30 teams and so on. Uh, most of these European leagues, most of the main soccer leagues, they have 20 teams with the exception of the German Bundesliga. They only have 18. And for the most part, the best clubs in the world are vying for three main titles uh, in a given year. They are fighting for the league title. They are playing for the league cup. And they're also playing for the Champions League or some sort of a continental competition. So I want to use a college basketball analogy now to talk about these three main trophies that each club are trying to get each year. And we'll start off with the league title. That's kind of like the regular season conference title. So you know that trophy that Kansas wins basically every year at the Big 12 regular season title. The league title, the Premier League, La Liga, whatever it is, it is basically only a regular season trophy. So it's it's kind of like the um, in National Hockey League, you have the President's Trophy, whoever's got the best record at the end of the regular season, they win that. That's how the Premier League works. That's how most of these big clubs work. Whoever has the most wins, the most points accumulated at the end of the season, they win the league title. So you may be thinking, oh, well, that's not that fun. There's no playoff system. There's no drama. There's no tension. Also, that large sample size probably means that most of the small clubs don't win a lot of the league titles. And you'd be right, uh, unfortunately, for the regular season award, for the league title, most of the big clubs, the teams with the most money, the most talented players, tend to win those matches because over a 38-game sample size, which is pretty much how long uh, most of these seasons are, the best teams are going to win more often than not. But the kicker is this second competition, the League Cup, is only a playoff system. It is kind of uh, back to the college basketball analogy. The League Cup is very similar to the conference tournaments. So ACC, SEC, Big 12, whatever conference it is, you know that they always have that conference tournament at the beginning of March, right before the NCAAs, where it is a, uh, a playoff bracket. It's a single elimination style. That's exactly how the League Cup works. And you take teams from the lower tiers, the, the minor leagues as well. It kind of gives everyone a chance. It is a single elimination thing and um, not as much prestige as the league title or the Champions League, which we'll get to in a sec. But the League Cup, very fun. Lots of more drama in that, in that competition. Then we get to the biggest annual club soccer competition in the world, and that is the UEFA Champions League. This is kind of similar to the NCAA tournament or March Madness. And uh, it's basically all of the best teams combined into one tournament. Uh, the format's a little different. I'll get to that. But uh, ultimately, it's teams that don't see each other very often. They are vying for supremacy over the entire continent or in terms of uh, the NCAAs, the entire country. And, you know, I, I've been using the European example because that's where most of the best players play. But there are Champions League kind of continental competitions throughout the other regions as well. In North America and Central America, we have the CONCACAF Champions League. Uh, you also have the Copa Libertadores for South America. So there's, there's multiple forms for this. But the main one is the UEFA Champions League which was made, uh, created back in 1955. It was originally called the European Cup, but it did change format a little bit. Uh, 1992, it was renamed to the Champions League. And nowadays, it's a very similar style to the World Cup. That's why I love the Champions League so much. 
You've got 32 teams at the beginning. Um, you've got a group stage where there's eight groups of four teams each, and they all play each other twice. Uh, the top two teams in each group advance to the round of 16 to the knockout stage, and then you have a knockout stage just like the World Cup. Uh, a couple differences, though, between Champions League and World Cup. The knockout games are played over two legs, not one. So, like an example, uh, Tottenham and, and Borussia Dortmund, an English club and a German club, are battling right now in the round of 16 in the Champions League. Tottenham, they already won the first leg 3-0. That was in Wembley Stadium in London on, on Tottenham's home turf. So now Dortmund, they've got to score at least three goals, win by three goals in the second leg to have a chance to uh, to advance to the quarterfinals. Otherwise, Tottenham uh, will be successful on aggregate. Also playing off the college basketball analogy, you have uh, lower tier continental tournaments. So there's Champions League at the top, but then the Europa League. Europa League is just a notch below the Champions League. That's kind of like the NIT. Um, it's, it's not as prestigious, but still a lot of teams would love to get their hands on the Europa League trophy uh, at the end of the year. So that's, you can't win the Champions League and the Europa League in the same year. They are, they are two different competitions. Um, and with the Champions League, with these continental competitions, it's all based on how you finished the season before. So I mentioned uh, the Champions League has the best European clubs in the world. Well, how do we arrive at that? Um, how do we arrive at that calculation? It's because however you finish in your league table, the league regular season race the previous season, that determines if you will qualify for the Champions League. So to give an example, in the English Premier League, I believe it's the top four teams will qualify for the Champions League the following season. All right, uh, in Spain, it's the same thing, the top four. And depending on how good the league is, that determines how many slots they get for the Champions League. So then you have like Italy, Germany, and France, they all get three teams in the Champions League. And then Russia, Portugal, uh, Turkey, uh, the Netherlands, maybe they all get two, and then so on and so forth. You know, Belgium, Ukraine, they all get one, whatever. So you have kind of a big pool of all the best European teams, all the um, all the champions from their own respective leagues. They're all kind of pooled into this one competition. That's why the Champions League is so fun. Uh, like a few years ago, we had a huge upset. Celtic, the Scottish champs, came out of nowhere, and they defeated Barcelona 2-1 in a group stage game that uh, just caught the whole world football scene by storm. So... You have fun matchups that way, and uh, it's just really cool to see teams that don't normally get to play each other uh, match up in the Champions League. So we talked about how teams qualify for the Champions League. It's based on their previous season finish. Um, so that kind of that kind of makes the regular season, that makes the league title race a little bit more fun. We're not only watching to see who finishes with the title, maybe in the Premier League or La Liga or wherever. We're also fight, or We're also seeing who's going to finish in the top four, and we're also seeing. Um, who's going to finish in the bottom three because the next point I want to bring up real quickly is this thing called relegation. Uh, three teams in most of these major leagues get relegated every single season. So that's the bottom three teams. All five of these main leagues do it in Europe and uh, they do it a lot. They don't do it in the MLS, but basically think of the relegation system. It's kind of like major league baseball, how you have the MLB and you got triple A, double A, single A. In most of these countries, they have more than one league. So you got the English Premier League, but then you have um, a few tiered leagues below it. And so let's say uh, you finish in the bottom three of the standings in a, in a given season. Let's say it's like Norwich City, Fulham, and uh, West Bromwich Albion. Then they will not be in the Premier League the following year. They will actually be in what's called the uh, the league championship. They'll be in the, the, the league right below. So... That's why there's there's no tanking in soccer. It's not like the NFL or the NBA where poor performance is actually incentivized in terms of like a draft order or, or whatnot. There's no tanking. And I think that kind of makes the league title race a little bit more fun because again, we're not just watching for the winner, but we're also looking to see who qualifies for Champions League. And then the next three, who qualifies for the Europa League, who gets relegated. So, I mean, yes, there is some mid-table obscurity, but for the most part, uh, every match is pretty important and teams are fighting for, for something. All right, so we know about the league title, we know about the league cup, and we know about the Champions League or continental competitions. Just a couple of other competitions I want to hit on real quick. Um, you might also turn on your TV and see something called the UEFA Super Cup. That is just an annual match, usually at the start of the season um, in August. It's contested by the reigning champions 
of the two main European competitions. So like last year, Real Madrid won the Champions League. Atletico Madrid, they won the Europa League. So they played each other. That's just for like an extra bonus trophy. Um, same thing with the Community Shield. The Community Shield, similar to the Super Cup, but that's just for the Premier League. So it's one game at the start of the year between the reigning uh, league title champion last year. That was Manchester City against the League Cup champion. That was Chelsea. They played just for a fun uh, extra trophy. That's called the Community Shield. Spain has a similar game to the Community Shield called uh, the what the Supercopa. Again, that's just within a league. So you have some other trophies, but most of those competitions are just one matchup at the start of the year or what have you. Um, you know, the FIFA Club World Cup. There's a few other competitions, but for the most part, you know, you can win four, five, six trophies in a year if you're an out-of-this-world team. But mostly Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Real Madrid, the Manchesters, the top teams in the world are fighting every single year for three main trophies. They're trying to win their own league, their own regular season award, basically, in the form of the league title. They're trying to win kind of that playoff fun bracket tournament in terms of the League Cup. And they're also trying to win their continental competition, which uh, the big one there is the UEFA Champions League. And so just so you know, the World Cup is entirely different. That is international play. It's an international competition that takes place every four years. Um, and so most of the best players in the world, they play for two different teams at the same time. Like Lionel Messi, he plays for Barcelona, his club team, and Argentina, his country. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo plays for Juventus in Italy, his new club team, and Portugal, his country. So don't get the World Cup confused with these competitions that I've, that I've talked about today. These are simply club competitions. All right, so hopefully you feel a little bit better now about the different soccer club competitions throughout the world. I know it's a lot to, to handle. It's not like the NFL or the NBA, one simple league that you can follow. There's a lot of different things happening, a lot of different leagues, a lot of different competitions. Uh, if you have any other questions, though, please hit me up in the comments. I'd love to answer anything, uh, chop it up with whatever. But, uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please, please subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media and uh, give me a thumbs up. And thank you so much, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.